show? Download the podcast at kcaaradio.com. KCAA. Laka with the hey. I Love San Marino County Radio Show. We got Henry Nickel in the house today. Um, this show is brought to you by Motivational Realizations in hey, the now. house. The energy um, of the positive en- thought. The energy of positive thought and um, run by uh, our, uh, our, Laka. our favorite co-host here, right here. Uh, and uh, um, I, I want to thank uh, everything you've done for the show, what you've brought to it, the different... Uh, types of talent and stuff we get to see. I mean, it's often, uh, uh, I, w- I would go like five or six, seven shows without talent. Now we're getting it all the we're time. Back. We're and those, back. Are, those are fun. Those are fun times when we get to uh, talk politics some days in the community. Then other days we get to talk uh, or just listen mm. to, to great poetry or our musical abilities. Yes, indeed. Yeah, good stuff. Um, uh, uh, we still looking for a, uh, a sponsor for Business of the Week, and we're looking for a sponsor for uh, a, a nonprofit of the week. So we're going to take our time. We're going to find somebody good for these uh, different awesome. spots, but it will be for uh, uh, $100 for the month. So if you're interested in it, please let us know, team. Definitely, definitely. Uh, I, I'd like to thank our sponsor, uh, uh, Max Zaire and uh, Zoe over there at Celebrities Bar and Grill on 40th. They have the Tuesday $9.99 steak special. I will be there next Tuesday. Uh-oh. Um, for my birthday. Hey right? now, hey I'm now. I'm getting the steak special. And everybody else says they got, they make their own money. They're going to get a burger or something. Uh, like. That's oh, fine. Uh, but I want steak special. Hey, hey, steak and, is good. And I, and I may get, you know, like uh, some kind of dessert or something. You treat know, yourself, you, man. Don't yeah, cheat yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, uh, Amy will probably make me something incredible. I have been requesting awesome. a, a banana, a baked banana. Uh, pudding? Uh, pudding. Ah, look at baked you. Banana. Look at you. Yeah. Yeah, like with the look meringues, guy, the meringue on top of the little, oh, the good, there you it, go. it looked good. That's All right, uh, well, so, so thank you, Max, for everything you do. And, and if you want to throw a party at Celebrities, hit him up. Um, uh, he has a whole deal, and he'll uh, give you a bottle of champagne with this deal. So, hey, now. So uh, hey check now. it out. And also that uh, Tuesday uh, steak special. So, uh, hit hey, him now. Up. Um, I, uh, oh, yeah, the, this, the I Love San Bernardino standout of the week today Um as Alice Hall. So uh, uh, a lot of us uh, um, uh, who know Alice Hall in the history area um, know she is from DeVore. And she's lived mm. on, a, on a piece of property out there in DeVore for a long, long time. Whoa. Right? Yes. And she knows a lot about that history and uh, of that whole area, right? So she, she, she's constantly putting up Facebook posts <coughs> about this very interesting history about a nice little corner of, of our community, right? Okay. The more rural area, they, they like their horses mm-hmm. and their, 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 their county, yeah. yeah. But 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 still, they're, they're, when I go there, it's kind of like, uh, like a, a look back at what San Bernardino used to be mm. back in the day when, you know, we had huge lots and people did have horses and, and goats and all that kind of True. stuff. I wonder, I wonder how much history she knows about um, Freedom Acres out there. Um, uh, she, she, I don't, I don't know. What, what's Freedom Makers again? Tell, uh, um, well, if you don't know, I don't want to spoil it for you. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, um, basically, she probably knows the, the older history. Um, she does write a lot about out of her old diaries and things mm. that she has from different people. And, I, and a lot of people have given her history to, 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 as a keepsake to hold on to. I know she's heavily involved with the Historical Society. And uh, I just want 
to, to tell her that I appreciate her. Definitely. And I love reading those little history things of accounts of real people from our area. Awesome. You know, it's cool to read about the, 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 the we were just talking about reading about Einstein and things like that. But it, it's also awesome to read about the movers and shakers that were in our community yes, right indeed. here that, that, that led, led, you know, to, to, the, to us. Amen. You know, to, Amen. To what we have now. So uh, uh, th thank you, uh, um, uh, Ben Chavez from First Lineage Site Services for uh, sponsoring um, uh, I Love San Bernardino Standout of the Week and Alice Hall. We appreciate you and all you bring to history. Now, I guess Yanni's got a whole list of incredible <laughs> events for us yeah, today. Yeah. And then we got the history tidbit. So let's hear them. Definitely, definitely. First, I want to shout out um, this weekend. It was an amazing weekend here in our city. We had the circus that was here. It was supposed to be the largest circus in the country. So it was here over the weekend at the um, NAS event center. Also want to shout out Chrissy Mills of the San Bernardino Pace Setters. They had an amazing drill team and drum squad competition at Cajon High School, um, Cardinal Pride. But it was a great turnout. Um, filled the gym. People coming, from bands and drum squads coming as far as Los Angeles and Las Vegas. But it was just a beautiful event with a lot of vendors and everything like that. Just a really positive time. Family friendly. Um, filled with love and support. I, I always love seeing the community come together and support one another and and um, it was a beautiful, a beautiful thing to witness. Also, um, as far as upcoming and, events, and, and, and good sound. Oh, good sound, yeah, good food. I love the beat and the drums. Definitely, I, I, it's awesome. Like there was, set, like who did somebody win the competition? You know or? what? I I had another event to go to, oh, so okay. I was there for oh, about no two and a half hours. But I know that it ran for about four, so I, I didn't see who the winner was. But to me, in my mind, they were all winners because they came winners. together. Yes. Yeah, you know what I mean. Absolutely, so, um, absolutely. but as far as this upcoming weekend, you know we have the Orange Show in town over the weekend, so that's another great event. But we also have the Autism Awareness Super Friends Walk this Saturday, April 20th. That's happening. If you want to get more information about that, you can reach out to Sistas, S-I-S-T-A-M-D, that's making a difference, 2020 at gmail.com for information about that. Um, the registration starts at 8.30 and the, the race, the walk, I should say, 10, a 5K walk starts at 10 a.m. I have a cousin, um, Adventure Joe, that's on the spectrum, so this is something that's near and dear to my heart. As well as the um, Garcia Centers of the Arts, they're having their film festival this weekend, April 20th, 420 for those that... Celebrate that as Let's well. Go out for <laughs> but so definitely go down to the Regal Cinema. Um, I'm not exactly what, what time it starts, but I know the film should be um, be shown throughout the entire day. A lot of these films are from artists and people from our community, from the Inland Empire. So definitely go out and support that. We might have our next James Cameron in the house or. Um, Whoever's a, another amazing movie director and producer, you know. You never know. You, you never, never know. You never. You never it starts. It starts from the beginning. So these are. We never know. So go and check it out. Like you know, Gene Hackman is from this area. You know what I mean? Also, I want to uplift. Um, this Sunday. Um, starting from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., we have our Faith Walk for P Peace. Um, that's in partnership with Interfaith Movement for Human Integrity, as well as the Riverside Interfaith Council. That's happening in downtown Riverside. You could go to the Riverside Interfaith Council Facebook page to get information, or you could go to the Interfaith Movement for Human Integrity Facebook page as well to get information about that. And finally, our last event happening on Saturday, April 20th, 420. But don't go into this event celebrating 420, yeah. because this is the San Bernardino Countywide Career Expo. Okay. So this is taking place from 9 to noon. If you go to um, San Bernardino County Superintendents of Schools, if you go to their Facebook page or to the website, you can find more information yeah, about that. Yeah, you ain't going there to party. You're going yeah, there yeah, to, to get a job. Yeah, so. yeah and, and, and probably a really good job. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Some of these jobs um, are, are well paying. Yeah, I, I was looking at that too, that they help you with your live scan, your TB test. So like, this is a place to go if you want to get started, at least uh, get get those uh, certifications and stuff in order, what you need uh, to get that dream career. Team. Yes, indeed. Totally. And, and you, de you, you deserve that dream career. Amen. Don't give up on your dreams. Yeah. And hopefully if this is, this is you walking through those doors, manifesting your dreams this Saturday. Um, I have one more event. May the fourth be with you. It's hey coming now. up with its festival. Right? Hey now. So if you want to find more out about festival, please go to the Instagram uh, parks and rec page, the San Bernardino parks and rec. And uh, they have a whole list of incredible events. I mean, I'm talking that things goes off with events. Definitely. So please go there and check it out. Um, 
which which the park festival is? I at? think it's the Lyle Creek. Is Lyle, it the, Creek, yeah, yes. Lyle Creek Park? Okay. Right. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun, team. Last time they had it at Second Lake, and it was incredible. So, Definitely. Um, I, I wish I wish I could be there because I love those you know events. Um, shout out to Parks and Rec. Shout out to Miss Juanita as well. But I just wanted to share this. I'm going to the Apex Legends um, tournament up there in Los Angeles. The a a the ALGS Apex Legends Global Series. It's a video game, first person shooter, right? But okay. all the best players from around the world, the top. 40 teams are coming, descending to Los Angeles to play um, the game and see who's the best in the world right uh, now. Uh, so. do, you, do you play those? Yeah, I do, but oh, I'm okay. hot trash. Uh, okay. <laughs> but yeah. I have fun. <laughs> I, I, I got I got an accomplishment. I just beat Zelda. Oh, the, that's yeah, OG, man. Yeah, level, baby. Hey, now. Yo, How about where you at on Kid Icarus? Yes, yes I, I, I'm, that's <laughs> next. That, but then I, there's a second... There's a whole second world or something. So now I'm like, mm. man, I can't jump back into Icarus. <laughs> no, but, you you beat the first half. <laughs> yeah, that was cool though. That was Amen. Cool. Amen. Like, you know, this is old school. You know, but uh, it, it's fun to play those old games sometimes. Right? Nintendo Power. Yeah. Um, uh, history tidbit. All right. I hope you guys, since we are having the Orange Show this weekend, I thought we'd do a little history about the Orange Show. Before you get in there, yes. do you think it will rain? Oh, uh, are, like people are already trying to say <laughs> that like yesterday's or two days, you know, that rain is, I get it. It was pre or show yeah. rain. <laughs> yeah, I ain't ever trying that again. I tried to fix that myth, but all I did was get hell. So <laughs> they, they, they want that. They want that myth and no one's taking it away. I hear you. Yeah, I hear so you. And in, in fact, uh, um, I, I like the rain. And, and, and I think if they want to embrace that, they should go back to the old days where they were having, like, if it rained and you picked the day, they'd give you a car. Hey, no. Hey, I man. mean, they, they made they made it fun, you know, For to real, predict to the play rain. On yeah. it, to play so, on it. So yeah. that's really the reason, you know, you know, when you're a carnival barker, you find ways to get people to the carnival, there right? You go. What's better than an Indian curse? Ah. Right? <laughs> All right. Well, here's this history. I, uh, the Swing Auditorium. Okay. The, uh, let me read. This is from Creating the Gate City, San Bernardino, California, by Nicholas Cataldo. Um, this is an incredible book, and, and this uh, quote is by Mayor Al Ballard. Um, and uh, uh, here we go. Uh, Swing Auditorium was the happening place in the Inland Empire. With a seating capacity of around 6,000 big name rock stars brought in a lot more people um, who crammed in the limited standing room sections. During the 1960s, the Swing played a host of some of the biggest rock musicians in the world. Mm. The Doors, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Three Dog Night, and Elvis played there. And so did Boston, Alice Cooper, and Leonard Skinner. When the Rolling Stones performed at Swing for the first time before 3,500 historical, oh, historical, hysterical teenagers on June 5th, 1964, it was also the legendary British rock band's American debut. But there were many other noteworthy performers as well. One of the true outstanding pioneers of rock and roll, Chuck Berry, mm. appeared at the Orange Show Swing Auditorium before the enthusiastic crowd on August 13th, 1965. He wooed the crowd with his with such legendary hits as Maybelline and Rolling Over Beethoven. Famed rock band Jim Morrison and the Doors made their first appearance at the Orange Show on July 4th, 1967. Perhaps it was the best at the time. They were an up-and-coming group of musicians and local promoters were not quite sure of the fan reaction to their sound. The, dorms, the doors performed inside the tiny Kaiser Dome. However, the band, which was sponsored by the local rock and roll station, came in 1290, bowled over the screaming 1,600 or so in attendance. Needless to say, their second visit to the Orange Show grounds, which was in December uh, 16th, saw them inside the more spacious Swing Auditorium. Fresh off the release of their number one hit, San Franciscan Nights, the rock band Eric Burden and the Animals performed 5,000 exuberant fans at Swing Auditorium in November 17, 1967. The tickets were $2 per person. Oh, man. Man. That's that, super expensive for back in the yeah, house. But, but I mean, <laughs> I, I wonder how it equals now to our tickets. Today's I mean, money. they try to get some serious money out of it. Either, like even like Nick even puts there. Wow, those were some great times, right? Yeah. So, awesome, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So we we have a 
And also later on, a plane crashed into the swing auditorium in a burnout. But that's not the most important history to me. Mm. Those incredible bands. The, the, the doors. The, our families. The, the kids had a place to go. Hey like, now. you know, they, stuff to do. And, and, and that's the kind of stuff that makes community, mm. makes great memories, and makes you want to stay in a community and, and grow old in a community. Amen. So uh, we have good history here. Uh, read this book, team. It's seriously cool. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, well, now we, we, we got a count, oh, uh, former uh, councilman, Henry Nickel, in the house today. Um, like, how does that work? It, are, like, sometimes they still call people a former, councilman. Yeah. Uh, We're a dime a dozen in yeah, this town. Like, well, <laughs> like, for example, I, I know so many former council yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, you're another one. Like, <laughs> so, so there's so nothing special about so being former. You don't say ex. There's you too many of us. You just say Henry Nickel. Exactly. Yeah, right. Henry. Yeah, yeah, right. I get called all kinds yeah. of things. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm a former well, council. Well, well, yeah, they call me everything else. I don't know a lot of people named after money. So are you rich? No, <laughs> nickel rich. Are you kidding nickel me, rich. nickel? You think I'm rich? <laughs> Mr. Definitely. Penny's the only guy that's poorer than me. <laughs> so, so, so we're, that that's going to be my start out question. Oh, where's nickel from? What? Where, where, where nickel? Is it? Oh, that's kind of interesting. I think it's Dutch. Mm. Um, but our family was what, they're Mennonites. Um, there were Mennonite immigrants that came here in the 1870s okay. on my mm. father's side, and. Um, uh, we still have family. The nickel name is actually you find it in Canada, you find it in South America. Oh, um, for, the, uh, where the Mennonite? Yeah, so are. the Mennonites, okay. yeah, they kind of spread out. So I've seen nickel come up occasionally um, in other parts of uh, North America and South America. That's cool. And so they're probably distant. It's relatives. a wonderful. It's a wonderful name. It's yeah. an interesting okay. name. Yeah, yeah. It's, it means uh, I think the vi victorious one. It's an old, awesome, old, uh, beautiful. Yeah, Dutch. Dutch name. I've always wanted to ask you that question every time. Yeah. Like you've been on here several yeah. times. I was looking through the photos, like wow. Yeah. Man. Uh, they actually came from Poland, Catherine okay. the Great, uh, because of uh, they were they they refused to fight in wars. Mm. They they were they were uh, persecuted there. Well, yeah, and they were given the right to live in Russia for about a hundred years, and then they began drafting. And uh, the Mennonites just were not people that believed in warfare. Mm. So and so fighting. so how. Th like the United States makes laws that they don't have. Well, yeah, I mean, you can be you can be a conscientious objector. Oh, okay. Yeah, and oh. that was basically the the Mennonite what religion about, is one of peace. What about a medical? Yeah, well, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'm also Adventist. And my family is also Adventist and very similar. But um, yeah, they d they did not take combat positions, but yeah, they could they could serve as as medics and See, so, so forth. I was trying to show like they, sure. they still oh, still oh, yeah, care, you right? Still yeah, serve. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It wasn't that you didn't. Yeah. It was just a you didn't time, take up the yeah, take up arms. People think yeah. they totally no like no the Amish or the Mennonites. Mm -hmm. They just totally withdraw, but no, they are heavily involved. Oh, in they the are. They are, and very yeah. much totally. about you know providing relief. You know, the, it, the it, Mennonite Relief Agency is one that's is there is there any well known. Any Mennonite communities uh, on the West Coast? The no, coast most of my f are, are the Mennonite side of the families in the Midwest. In the Midwest. Kansas, mm -hmm. Nebraska. Yeah. Okay. My dad and, was born in Nebraska. And, uh, and and you've lived in San Bernardino? My whole life. Your whole life? I was born at uh, Community Hospital. There you Community go. Hospital? About right. a mile from where I live, so I didn't, I didn't go very far. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I, I wouldn't say all that because you just shared earlier about you were just coming back from a trip from Rome um, oh, not yeah, too yeah. long ago. Well, yeah, <laughs> after, after I, I um, became a former council member. Um, you had free time? Yeah, I, well, I guess so because I got a call, I think it was probably February after I, I left office in December. And uh, it was COVID, so we were working from home. And uh, my husband and I, we decided to redo the house, so we were... Uh, we tore out the kitchen, the living room, and mm. we were working on the house. I got a call from the county and said, uh, we have your nieces in foster care, and we need to place them with mm. a family member. And apparently I was, my husband and I were the only family members that qualified. So mm. we ended up with two girls. Awesome. So oh, a 14-year-old, oh. and I think sh uh, six, she was six at the time. Well, and right so right um, right. we ended up with uh, two, two girls. Good and for so you, we've Stephanie. Been, uh, we've been uh, awesome. raising two girls in our home. Right. For the last few years, and it's uh, it's been a change. It's been, but it's it's been great. Too. Okay. So we took the oldest one to Rome last year for a graduation awesome. present. She graduated early. Awesome. And, smart. Uh, smart. So uh, yeah, we've had uh, 
We've that, had that some interesting you, trips and makes me happy opportunities to, to see the world and uh, enjoy family. You, Beautiful. You, your, your family really blossomed when you yeah, got some, yeah, some free no, time there, right? Yeah, well, life's full of blessings. <laughs> yes. Amen. You just, Amen. You, you just We're count every day as a blessing. And, uh, and, and, you know, and life, it, life there, there's life after politics, too. Oh, gosh, yes. 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 It <laughs> might be a better life yeah. after politics, but what, what brings you back? Yeah, <laughs> well, where are you going for again? <laughs> Uh, there's something psychologically wrong with us to <laughs> yeah. run for office. It's, it's just, I don't know. It's a, it's, you want to put yourself through hell? Uh, I guess. <laughs> no, but, but there's things you know. It you, does take a special person it to be does. able like, to put yourself through that stress. Yeah, it does. And, and you have to put it all in perspective. And you got to do it for the right reasons. And, um, you know, I just think our cities, I, I, I've always been somebody that looks at the diamonds in the rough. Mm. You know, I always look at. You know, things that other people have rejected. Mm -hmm. And I try to find the value and the virtue and the beauty in things and, 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 and see how we can make things that other people have basically thrown away, make them desirable or and, beautiful. and beautiful. And I think that, that we live in a very beautiful, I've lived, as you said, I've been able to live in other parts of the world and travel. And I still think this is probably one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Mm. Right I here. I mean, when you look out and you see what the we get to see. The, I mean, the no, <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's, uh, th and you know, we talk about our history. This city that we're in right now in this studio was one of the wealthiest parts of the country mm. at the turn of the uh, 19 or the, the 20th oh, century. Yes. Smiley, and, the and this, the, you know, people flocked here from the Definitely. East Coast. I mean, this was. You know, Teddy Roosevelt came here to campaign for president. I mean, this was this was one of the wealthiest places in the world. And why? Because it is such a beautiful place. We have great weather, we have great surroundings. We had the you know the um, the, the Arrowhead Springs Hotel. You know the, the right hot there. springs. Definitely. You know we had we had you know people came here for their health to Definitely. improve their lives. Uh, we had the citrus industry. Definitely. I mean, it's, it's just it, there's such a Beautiful, and you know, going to Italy, going through Tuscany, you know, mm. we went to Florence, and you know, all the great people and great art and great, you know, great thought that came out of that part of the world, and a lot of it had to do because it was just such an ideal place. And I think we have the same thing here. I mean, Definitely, we have, we have great minds. We have the, you know, we talk about the film industry. You know, all the great cinema that we've 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 Definitely. enjoyed for our lives. Comes from here. Amen. I mean, this is it. Amen. You know, you know Amen. When you go around the world. People, say, oh, you're from California. I mean, it's like, you I, know, I, people, people, are like, wow. I, no, I totally, totally. I, like I just it. saw the 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 in Chino is they filmed the thing for uh, Back to the Future and they yes, showed. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, that I saw very that. I saw that. Yeah. Awesome. We, we have some good history in our area. Just to offer a little um, history about the city of Redlands. Um, this city is, they build themselves as being built on philanthropy with the, um, the Smiley Brothers and uh, many other um, wealthy individuals gave a lot to build this community of Redlands. Um, like you said, one of the main contributing factors was the centric growth. So you had, um, I just discovered this over um, last Friday because I'm a part of the Redlands leadership cohort. Shout out to the Redlands Chamber of Commerce. So I just saw the photo of Teddy Roosevelt coming down Orange Street and the other president, I forget the name, but he came out here twice. So there's been two presidents that have visited out here in, in Redlands, and one of them came twice. Um, there also was a, a, a large um, Chinese population um, that dwelled over here, as well as African American population, you know, um, that that resided over here in, in, in um, Redlands. So it's a lot of great history here, and, and I'm so happy that you you raised that up. Yeah, well, I, you know, and, and, and Redlands has always been in uh, San Bernardino County. So we, yes, we, we, it we, is a part we, of San Bernardino we, County. We, we love San Bernardino. Sure. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Even though, no, I just had to say, because sometimes Redlands tries to you know, stand on their own, you know, but like we're a community together. We're all, you know, because I like to go downtown Redlands, you know. Hey now. And who hasn't, uh, you know, did the pub crawl from the, you know, the, <laughs> the dirty bird to the, to, <laughs> down to the tavern or whatever, you know. You know, I just had, um, I just had the pleasure of being there at the Royal Falconer um, with the legislation forum that um, Congressman Obernalty was there. It's a nice kind little of spot. It's Good history the there. The fish was awesome. Shout out to the Royal Falconer. Yeah. That 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 fish was amazing. What did you get? Uh, what kind of fish? Um, it, I'm not too sure. I think it was cod or okay. a halibut, but it was delicious. Really fried well. It was okay. excellent. Even the congressman was raving about it. And yeah. so I was like, I had to get me some. And they yeah. had so much food that they were like, man, they brought out to the to-go boxes 
person like, hey, take take food home, y'all. So I grabbed me three pieces of fish, and yeah. I was good in the neighborhood. Yeah. You know? Those are the best part about those events. Hey, now. <laughs> Free food. Yes. That's, I, I, I've told this to reporters because reporters aren't – they're not really supposed to eat food at events. But I'm like, I tell them, you know, I'm no reporter, man. I'm, this is my tax <laughs> dollars. This is here. poor man journalism <laughs> here. <laughs> Different rules. We get something out of this, kitty. All right. So, uh, all right. So we're off on a tangent. But uh, so, so Henry, you're, you're running for the fifth ward of San Bernardino. Um, you're running against uh, Kim Kinnas, uh, uh I'm running with Kim oh, Kinnas. Oh, you're running yeah, with? Yeah, I don't run against anybody. Okay, you're running with yeah, Kim Kinnas. Yeah, uh, I like that. Uh, and uh, there was there was a wide range of candidates. Yeah. Uh, um, the incumbent uh, Ben Reynoso, mm -hmm. uh, uh, unfortunately, didn't get enough votes to enter the runoff. So uh, it's there is not a, an incumbent Nobody got in 50%. the race. Yeah. So yeah. so the way the elections work is. Uh, uh, there's a runoff. If nobody gets 50 percent plus one, uh, yeah, plus one, then the top two go to a runoff. So that's that's what will happen. Uh, we'll go to a runoff in November, and I'm looking forward to it. I think this is a, a great opportunity for. I think uh, Kim's a great person. I've known her for a long time. She's, a great community so, activist. She is a nice lady. Very, very nice very lady, nice. and um, I think uh, this is an opportunity for us to listen to our community. Mm. I think we always talk about, well, what's your plan? I said, well. You know, everybody has a plan, as Mike Tyson said, until you get punched in the face. Yeah, yeah. And this is a town that loves to punch you in the face. So, <laughs> so, so, so you know, it, yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> you, you, you come to that diet and say, oh, I'm going to do this, that, and bam, you yeah. get smashed in the face. Yeah. You're like, well, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, there, yeah, every, but, I've had so many dreamers in this town. I know. Yeah, yeah, I, I love to listen to those plans. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, yeah. you're right. That yeah. good. That'll last about yeah, yeah. two <laughs> seconds once you get up there, and that plan's history. I'm sorry to tell but, you. But there, but sometimes I do hear legitimate ideas that that, that right that, that, that spark. You're like, well, like, that is possible. Well, so, I think, so what I are think are that's what I think that's what you know. And I, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm just going to speak for myself. But I think that's what we have to do as council members. Is our job isn't to be obtuse and to mm. fight each other. Our job is to listen. First, to listen to the constituents, the people who elect us. That's our job. We're representatives. Yes, indeed. And then to help listen to each other, because we're all coming to the dais, bringing the, the ideas that we're taking from our constituents. Hopefully, we've listened to them. Amen. And, uh, you know, I some may recall one of the things I did as a council member religiously was host community meetings. I met with constituents before every council meeting. We discussed the uh, agenda. Uh, we Jersey's go pizza. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we go <laughs> through it. And, and I get calls and... and you know, my job was, look, I, I have my own opinions. You know, I certainly have my own thoughts of what I think needs to be done, but that's not my job. My mm -hmm. job isn't to be up there to represent me. I hear you. My job is to be up there to represent the 15, 17,000 people that vote. And I'll be honest, if you don't vote, I'm sorry. I love you. Yeah, I hear But you. if you don't vote, you don't have a voice. I hear you. So, you know, if you... If, if, if you're voting, then yeah, I think you deserve to be listened to. You you you've 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 expressed yourself through your vote. You Whether I agree you with vote. you or not is irrelevant. What matters is that I listen to you. Amen. And that I take those ideas, whether I agree with them or not, um, and take them to that dais and then work with my fellow council members and listen to my fellow council members. Amen. My job isn't to be up there to be uh, aggressive or to, to to win points or score points. My job is to to represent the community that's elected me and mm. collectively we represent all of our communities and advance the best interests of our city. Awesome. Awesome. So that's what I hope to bring back is a sense of collegiality, working together and engaging our community. Because I think as you said, you know, one of the great things that, that created San Bernardino, that created Redlands, that created Riverside, this inland empire, was were people that came together, mm. not people that divided. And I think, that, you know, we've had this philosophy over the last several election cycles, unfortunately, that's this division philosophy. And I'm like, yeah. that's not what makes us strong. Totally. Um, you said I Compromise. Uh, yeah, I went to yeah. Rome over the summer. And, you know, you, you see this great city. And we had the opportunity to stay near the Colosseum. And the first night I got there, I was exhausted, but I said, I gotta get out and see this place. Yeah, totally. And you go to the forum. And the forum is the, the place in which all of government of the Empire of Rome coalesced. Mm. It's the most powerful place on the planet. And it's ruins. Mm. 
It's ruins. Yeah, it's some it's stones scattered on the ground. I hear you. So that can, what that you can realize be anywhere, is that, huh? That's what you some realize is to be that as, as easy it is for people to come together and create something great, it's it just as easy to blow yeah. it up mm. and destroy it. Divedi et impera, which was the way in which Rome conquered the known world at that point. And it was what ultimately destroyed Rome. Mm. Division. And, yeah. and we see that on our streets. We see that mm. in our government. Um, especially now. Especially, especially now. now. And we've got to change that trajectory. It's, it's got to change. Amen. So, so, so how would you uh, work differently um, with your future possible council members than you did in the past? Um, well, I think I learned a lot. Um, losing is a good learning experience. Oh, so my. No, yes, failure. You learn is. more from your failure than it is. success. You know, you, really. you know, success, you don't learn from success. <laughs> You don't. Success, you, don't. you know, it's when Not you fall you down. That's you enjoy you it. That's, a, that's how you learn how to ride a bike. That's how you learn how to ski. When I just went skiing with uh, my niece for the first time. She hated it the first two hours. She thought, I hate this. Because she cut she she learning. She's half learning. the time. It's like, just stick with it. Amen. Stick mm -hmm. with it. You, you'll figure it out. By the end of the day, she was enjoying it. She there got you go. home and she, She's over there on the black sunburn, diamond slope now. I want to do this again. I was like, yeah, of course. Beautiful, beautiful. And that's 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 how we learn. We yes. learn through our failures, so, so not through our successes. So you had that feeling, like I have that feeling. You feel I like you fell off the what, bike and you can you're right, ready to I get back what, on. And I think the the thing that I I failed to realize is that um you have to respect people with other opinions. Yes. Um, and I think we get in government, we, we kind of get in a role and we get comfortable, and then we lose sight of what's, mm. again, what our job is. And our job is to listen to things that might make us uncomfortable. True. And to consider things that might make us uncomfortable. And more than likely, they are going to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> well, yeah. if you're not uncomfortable, yeah. there's yeah. Some, probably yeah. something something wrong either you're not getting the information you need mm. hopefully there is some positive feedback yeah. you know what you're hoping well, for well, no, yeah, no, yeah. i'm not saying it needs yeah. to be negative or aggressive or you know it's, it's just but it needs to, usually. It, it, it's usually something that might not necessarily jive with the way you might see things and um i think that that's that's what i think i'm going to bring back to the dais is is a willingness and I, I still keep in touch with my former colleagues. There you go. You know, I, we always had the, or I at least had the philosophies, you know, we can get up there and argue and debate and disagree, but afterwards we all got to be able to go out and either have a beer or, or have dinner or, or enjoy each other's company. Yes, we, we honestly do. I hear you. As much as you might believe some of us didn't, I don't think I would not consider any of my former colleagues as friends. I hear you. I I hear they're you. all friends. That's that, beautiful. That, that, that shows a lot about you. Yes, your yeah. character. I, I don't dislike. You know, people say, oh, who do you not like? I, say, That's, I don't know. I don't dislike That's a beautiful anybody. Disposition. I don't think I dislike anybody. I disagree with some people, but I... Definitely. I, yeah. I, my, my question for you, because you kind of shared earlier about, you know, um, how you would meet with the community at, at Jersey Pizza's prior to every council meeting. Are you going to be reinstituting that? Yeah, and in fact, we're going to start that immediately. Um, this week, I just I just got notice, so we, we've got some information that's going out to voters this week, but we're going to be reinstituting that, that, um, that community meeting, community engagement, um, those events, and I think it's necessary. Totally. I love, I wish um, everyone would yeah, I love I, use I, that I don't model. know why a council member wouldn't do you that. You buying the garlic bread? Well, we'll see. <laughs> for the first one, for the first one. Have you had Jersey's garlic bread? It's like this freaking big. It's huge. It's awesome. Well, we'll see about Jersey's. Actually, oh. Jersey's, you know, I felt kind of bad for them because we had some really raucous, mm. raucous meetings. There. Mm. That was in the, the, the depths of bankruptcy. I hear you. And it got rough. It got rough. And you know what I realized? It was kind of interesting. Just, you know, how people really are, but. You know, some of the people that were the most aggressive and disagreed with me the most when I first got elected actually became some of my strongest supporters. I later. believe you. 
Um, and that I shows think, you to the importance of listening, well, even and, though it's uncomfortable. Right. You might not agree, but you, yeah, beautiful things can come about. You might your allies might have been your enemies on different problems in this world. It's it just it changes all the time. Yeah. Well, I think I think you forge strong relationships with people that you might have had strong disagreements True at some indeed. point because it does. I think it creates a a, a, a bond. mutual respect. Yeah, as mutual well. respect. Well, you learn yeah. more from your competition. Yeah, and especially if you stick it out together. True. You figure out a way to, you know, which we had to. We had no choice in bankruptcy. I mean, it was a do or die. Word up. Our backs were against the wall. We I, had no I have choice. to say, there is some situations if someone is too narcissistic, it's sometimes oh, it's absolutely. hard to, to reflame any type of true yeah. relationship but if you it's know, toxic yeah, yeah. you gotta let it you gotta let it uh, and everybody has a degree yeah. of narcissism <laughs> it's, uh, let's be honest everybody yeah. has some narcissism in him and, and i'd be looking some, in the mirror all the time bit more <laughs> than others what dude that you was know, you I, that I, was I, you I, man. I, did, I did trim i did trim my eyebrows before this show, you know. <laughs> okay I just want to make go. sure i looked okay <laughs> Man, my, my favorite thing lately to do is... getting those brows, you know, when you get older. You get I the hear. brow, you get that last you guy's mixed up. You're like, oh, I'm starting man. looking like Merlin just or something. Just the long one that's like one... Yeah, that's just right there. Yeah. Like right there. It's like, whoa, where'd that come from? That's, that's, that's a yesterday. wisdom hair. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it grew overnight. It's like a beanstalk or something. <laughs> <laughs> now you get older, you start... Man, I, hair in my ear, where did it Definitely. <laughs> Um, another question I had, because I know that you are really good at listening to your constituents and, and what the community is expressing. What are you hearing now that, that, um, that the community is expressing to you and, and, and those that are going to be voting for you are voting for you to, to represent what? Well, and I, I think it gets back to the core. What, what, what is our job as a council? It's really very simple. <clears throat> it's three basic things in my mind. Create a safe, clean, prosperous city for everyone. Amen. Not for just certain people, for everyone. Or certain wards. Right. right. Including the in-house. Yeah, it's got to be for Amen. everyone. Amen. And that's how you create a great city. Yeah. It really is. I mean, you can't have an unsafe, clean, prosperous city. You can't do that. Yeah, it's totally. it's got to be all three together. And and our job is is to, to get beyond personal agendas, vendettas, you know, whatever it, whatever it is we're bringing, whatever baggage we have, we leave that to the side. We come to the dais. And we work together to create a safe, clean, prosperous city. And I think that's what most people want. You know, we yes. were talking about this earlier. You know, we, we talk about politics and we're always arguing. We're always, we tend to focus on those, you know, 10, 20% of things that yeah. we don't Agre agree on. Line I think up we on. all agree more or less. Totally. We want a safe, clean, prosperous city. The question is, how do we do it? True indeed. And, and, and what is the process and how are we going to ensure that everybody gets a fair share and, and, and is treated you know, with, with respect Amen. in that process. So, um, and that's what I'm hearing from most people. They want, they're concerned, homelessness is the biggest issue. Yeah. I'll be honest, it's homelessness, homelessness, homelessness. 90% of the people if, I talk to. If you're, that, if you're in, a, like where Amy lives, it, it's, it's, it's yeah. safety. Yeah. Like, so homelessness is just, they're in the backyard. We just look over the fence. There's like three or four camps r literally in the back fence. That's not as big a deal to us as, if the gun fires, it mm. hurts us, right? Yeah. So, so it's just so you know that. Right, yeah. Yeah. And, and then, of course, crime, um, uh, blight. You know, sure. we have a city. And, and I, but I think one of the things, you know, when we talk about homelessness, one of the big issues that I'm really focusing on now is, is home ownership. How do we help people mm, that become pipeline. owners in our community? You know, for years, we've... Totally. You, you know, and I understand, you know, not everybody has the ability at certain points in their life to, to be a homeowner, but I think that that is the way in which you create true multi-generational wealth and totally. you create a stable community. Totally. And I want to help people become homeowners. Amen. Everybody. Amen. I mean, I want, I want to provide a mechanism which we as a city can help people become owners Beautiful. of this community. Stop, stop the big companies from investing right. in, and in I just, homes. Like, and it, it rubs some yeah. of my traditional supporters the wrong way, but I don't think it's a greater benefit. Uh, yeah, I, a greater I can't good. think of anything that's going to help this city really reestablish itself as a desirable, stable community other than, you know, because when people take ownership, you know, I care about the quality of my I'm park. Just I care about the cleanliness of my, my, my streets. The and school, the, the school, and the school districts. Else, yeah. I care about the, because I'm vested here now. Pride and ownership. Yeah, I have a piece that, that, that little, House Definitely. that I have, that's my my piece of this big thing Definitely. that we call the city. And I think 
if I didn't own it, I don't think I'd feel quite the same passion. Definitely, definitely. Um, and I don't think it's, you know, you know, my grandma, you know, and we've heard it said, you know, you can be poor, but you don't have to be dirty. Yeah, that's and true. and I've just, you know, some of the, some of the that's people true. that I've seen care the most for their homes are not wealthy people, but they love their home, they love their community, they're proud of their home. Definitely. And it's something that builds pride, you know. When yes, you indeed. own that thing that you live in, um, it makes you feel good when you come home at night. And Pride and ownership. You yeah. want to keep it up. You want to beautify right. it. You, and you want everything around you to be just as beautiful. Exactly. And I think ownership definitely cultivates that sense exactly. and that mindset. So, so that's really what I, I would like to focus on. But, of course, to do that, we have to create a community that functions appropriately, that we address the needs of our community. Homelessness, I hate the term because I don't think it unhoused, accurately describes. I think, I think we're dealing with a lot of people in life crisis. Mm. And those crises range from everything from psychological issues, yeah, maybe, it's maybe all dependency, it's, 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 it, maybe yeah. it's abuse, maybe, it's, Escaping maybe abuse. it is economic, maybe it is that they lost a job. It's a lot of different it, things that we all put it under this banner. Right, a lot of the it, right? it's, 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 it's many of aspects because that drug use could be trying to deal with yeah, your mental well, health issue. It. So it's, 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 it's a lot it's of overlap. Just, it's just this com this weird combination of drugs. Like, I've never seen the zombie kind of, mm. it's yeah. really scary. And what, 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 like what I always ask corner. myself, what would, what would motivate somebody to get to that point yeah, where they are medicating themselves to such a degree that they've basically lost touch? D depression. Like, and, and, and that to me, that to me is, th you know, that's pretty deep. No, you know? it, it, and it, it is. And it does start to cut to things like, you know, you know, we we used to trauma. be called the city of churches. You know, San Bernardino was a city of churches. I think it still is a city of churches. Um, but there is something to be said. You know, and we were talking about this earlier. You know, every religion, you know, we all kind of share some things in common, Definitely. regardless of, of what what faith you come from. What name you may use? Yeah, what name you may use. And I think it's just you know we were talking about this earlier, Robert. But I think it's you know this concept of a reverence for the eternal. That you know, there's something bigger than you than this life. Definitely. Mm -hmm. You know that that we have to leave this world better than we found it so That's that those that come after us can en get enjoy some, the world. Get some too. Get yeah. something, yes, and that's how things ultimately get better and improve. And it's like, it's on that same thing, it's just handing better next to the, to the next generation, just like life was handed to us, you right. know, and we are in the midst of w trying to make the changes and make it better so we could do a handoff. And, and it's, it's, it's been handing off through the eons, you know, since since the conception of man, we know this planet has been here for billions of years, and man has existed for hundreds of millions of years. But you know, you know, even biblical, you know, biblical teachings they touch and talk about, you know, wine and you know, intoxication, things like that. And so, it's not something that's new. I mean, no, we've been dealing with this since the dawn of man. You know, we're always trying to medicate the traumas e of life. E even some animals, of course, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like you know, wild, it, we all deal with traumas get and, and, and things that totally and eat certain we, berries that elicit a certain response. Yeah, the right non for profits, uh, working with the county, city together, get at least some of these shelters uh, beds available. Totally. Uh -huh. um, next question, of course, I have to ask. The, the famous oxbow. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Pile. What are you going to do big, to this one? That big pile of debris. It's yeah. junk. It's, it's, it's a dumping ground is what it is. I mean, let's just call it what it is. Uh, that's, that's construction debris that under the guise of, of a permit, um, they dumped material that was debris. It wasn't construction material. Can, cannot be used for construction material. They know that. We know that. That's why there's an issue. It was dumped there. And, and that was my whole point when I was on the council is they didn't have a right to dump debris. Um, their permit was for stockpiling construction material. Hmm. So technically that debris should have been processed before it was brought there. Just because they dumped debris doesn't now alt entitle them to then turn a residential area into a concrete grinding operation. Mm -hmm. And that was my whole point. I said they violated the terms of their permit the minute they brought that first truckload of debris and dumped it. So technically they're in violation of, of our municipal code. And just like anybody, if I dump junk mm -hmm. in my front yard, code would come to my door within a day or two and say, 
you have X number of days to remove this. Otherwise, we will remove it and we will send you a bill. And if you can't pay that bill, then we'll put a lien on your property. And if that doesn't work, we'll ultimately take that property. Yeah. And I think that's what needs to happen here. It's really very simple. Um, otherwise, there's a process in which the developer, the landowner could approach the city and through the planning commission and other mechanisms, propose a variance or some alternative to what the code, municipal code allows that would allow grinding. But I think they're gonna have a hard time doing that because once you open that door, mm. once you allow one developer to come in and basically skirt the rules, do something they weren't supposed to do, and then say, well, you know, hey, it's already there, what can we do? Oh, that's not a dilemma that we created, that's a dilemma you created, I dude, and you gotta figure out how to fix it. Word up, um, I like that. And I just, I'm just tired of people taking advantage of this community because they think you know, we're not as smart as everyone else or that well, we're more well, vulnerable that, or we can be bought off. And I just that warehouse did do one good thing. And where was that? It's not Chubsy Smash hey! Burger. Yeah! Have you had a Chubsy's yet? I haven't had a Chubsy's. Oh. I've been check trying him. to limit my Chubsy's. <laughs> You're going to Chubsy's. I, I, I was a Chubsy's for about seven years on the council. And, and looking good, brother. You're looking pounds, good, man. Just like that once I left the council. So <laughs> and now you're going back. <laughs> I know. I know. All, all that we'll co cortisol just, just I, went I away, man. man. It's amazing how many people you gained 20 pounds the first six months. I said, how'd that happen? I was like, I, put, you know, I, I buy new suits. I was like, I'm not rich enough to buy all new suits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, had, we were, like, what, $50 a month back then as council members? <laughs> so, so, so do you, ha do you have any real. pet project? Not like you, but something you would like to see personally. I know you're doing everything. You oh, there's do a everything lot project. of things what I'd would, like to What see. would you like to see? Yeah, well, beautiful. I think obviously our downtown needs to be made a downtown. A downtown. <laughs> and, and that was one of the things, you know, um, I, and I, I got the opportunity to travel to, to other parts of the country and see you know, we're not unique. You know, we think, oh, San Bernardino, you know, oh, we're, we're just, you know, we're just different than everybody else. No, we're not. Everybody goes through bad times. Totally. You know, communities go through their ups and downs, and we're totally. going through a, a downtime, but that's, to me, I like downtimes. Because you know, it didn't, going up, right? Well, you know, I, you know I, I was always kind of, you know, they talk about entrepreneurs. Well, entrepreneurs are very, you know, what is an entrepreneur? Well, that's a very simple concept. Identify a problem and create a solution. Definitely. I love problems. Problems excite me because that's like that's an opportunity. Opportunities, I hear you. I like that frame. You I know, like when, that mindset. When you hear, oh, I got this crazy, I got this terrible problem. Like, then you've got an excellent opportunity. There you go. And I think that's what I see with this town. I see, I see, kind of an opportunity to recreate a new a new destination. And I know one of my colleagues on the council, uh, Councilman Charette, he talked about creating a world class city. And I agree with that. I think getting I think back to the all American I, I, I think we can be. I look at our we have an international airport. We've got I was just saying we've got, we've got <laughs> Cal State San Bernardino. Go yeah, Yotes. We've got a hub of, of uh, ground transportation, whether it's our freeway system or our rail system. We and a community college rail coming right? definitely. San Bernardino. Go Wolverines. And let me offer we've this got little university, we got all these things. Yeah. Definitely, especially especially throughout when you look at the inland in San Bernardino County, there's so many great institutions here. But or one, oh, one thing <laughs> one thing I just learned about the the um, international airport is that it's in the top 30 and it's one of the fastest growing airports in the nation as far as that co runway, cargo. That runway is one of the few runways in Southern California that can handle the ultra heavy. Definitely. That, I, I don't know if it, you know, it, when they took over and that airport was taken from the Air Force, they rebuilt that entire runway. I'm a pilot. I, I, I know a little bit about awesome. flying. Awesome. What did you fly? What do you fly? I have my own airplane. I, I, I fly. I, 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 everybody called me. You know, there was this crash, I guess. A, a, a <laughs> tragic incident. I mean, horrible, horrible. Well, I, I'm happy but, it but, wasn't you. But I've had, yeah. You know, I've been getting phone calls today. Where, oh, we're just checking in on you. We just want to make sure that wasn't you. So but what do you fly? What do you fly? I fly a little Piper. I have a little Piper there. That That's we, beautiful. Yeah, we went up skiing with Big Bear last weekend. Where, where did you learn? Because I have a dream of learning how to fly. I love jets my whole life. That's great. What would you recommend to how to get started in that process? Go, because uh, I know one of the colleges. Okay, you flying. we'll go flying and uh, see if it's something you, you really want to do. But um, I had the opportunity when I was younger. We had what was called Civil Air Patrol, okay. Norton Air Force Base, ah. and I was a cadet, and uh, we learned search and rescue. But we also had the opportunity to fly, awesome, and learn learn aviation. And uh, so I've always that's been one of my hobbies since I was. Very young. Had, you my were, dad was a pilot, so you I. You were awesome. at the air show twice. All, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that. Yeah, there's a little, 
I actually had a talk with airport management when I got elected and said, why don't we have an air show here anymore? Oh, I got yeah, I mean, A couple years later, we had an air show. I said, that's great. And it's then, about like, time. I asked them again, but I guess they just can't shut down. It's, it's, yeah, it's a busy sad. airport now, which is what we wanted. We wanted totally. to create you know, get Four some minutes. excitement and, and get some visibility for our airport. And, and I think the air show helped us do that. And now we've got, uh, we've got passenger service. For years, oh, we'll never get passenger Well, we've got passenger service. Definitely, now. definitely. Um, this, this last question is not more so in the politic realm because I feel like you have a very um, positive outlook and, and mindset at, at looking at things. How did you cultivate that mindset and the way you observe and um, see things? Well, I think it's just... Um, you, you are different. Well, I, yeah. Everyone's. I mean, I, I've had my ups and downs too. We all. I mean, do. we all have. I mean, you seem more confident, dude. I just and more comfortable at yeah. ease. Well, I was trying to think about this the other day, but you know, as you get a little older, mm. that, start, that, that is true. We, we <laughs> just start. Yeah, yeah. The filter is going. <laughs> <laughs> why, why did I make so much out of you know what I was wearing or how I looked or how I thought I was presenting myself? I said, why, why don't you just be honest? Word up. Just, just be honest. I think, you know, after a certain period of time, you, like I say, failure is a great, that is a great up. teacher. And I, I, I'll be honest, the, the more I, I've come to, you know, we were talking about some, some, some biographies that I've read. And what fascinated me is these great people, how they failed. Mm. So, so many, almost all of them had some devastating failures. And that just made them stronger. Definitely. And when I look at our city and we talk about our city being a failure, I say, wow. That means we can be a it's great city. It's a phoenix rising city. out of the We ass can be a here. really great city because we've, we've been there. We've felt that. We know what works and what doesn't because we've done it, we've felt it, and now we have an opportunity to build on that. And as long as we don't repeat it, Totally. And I, we'll I would be, even we'll say, be stronger and better. Amen. Word up. And, I, and I, I, I say, I think it's only failure if you quit. But because if you if right. you fail and you glean wisdom and you apply that yeah. knowledge into your life, it's not failure. It was a learning. No, no. I couldn't agree yeah. with that. A hundred percent. But I like if anybody's interested, you can come on um, our website, henrynickel.com. We're also doing um, where one of the things that I've noticed, uh, I just got burglarized on Sunday morning. Oh, sorry. sorry about it. Sorry to hear that. Uh, actually, got burglarized twice. Come and find out my neighbor said they, they, they hit our house twice in the morning. Um, but we're doing some work on the house. They stole some stuff. But um, what I'm noticing, people want need a way to report issues. And I think we've, we've had a reporting system in the city. And, and we need to improve upon that. Mm. Council members need to really be responsive to, to addressing those pothole issues, street light totally. issues. We've had street light issues uh, since, since September. So we have a, a website, ward5service.com. So people can report that. And what I'm going to be doing is going to the council meetings every two weeks and saying, look, we've had these issues. Can we please get some progress? Please? Amen. Can, and just, just not being obtuse, not being mm -hmm. aggressive or, or, or mean-spirited, but just saying, look, we, we need, need to address you to these. step up now. Let's do the job that we were elected well, to do. Well, that's let's, that's let's awesome. Thank, thank you for coming on the show today. Uh, it's going to be a great election. All right, thank uh, you. Thanks, Yanni, uh, for thank everything you, we do and, and motivational realization. Uh, the energy of positive thought. And this is Robert Porter and Ipiani Lockhart with the I Love San Bernardino County Radio Show. And we are out of here. Yeah.